Hi everybody, my name is Kayla Lane and we are here with Create Better Health and Utah State University Extension. Create Better Health is Utah SNAP education component of uh, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. We run through Utah State University Extension offices in every county of the state and all of our information that we deliver to you comes through U the USDA recommendations. So all the information that we'll be delivering to you today is going to be based off of science-based evidence um, to help support you in your health through nutrition and physical activity. We teach our lessons in four parts, and today we're going to be covering lesson three, um, where we'll be t discussing the fruits and vegetables food groups and how to overcome barriers to physical activity. Okay, so today is all about eating more fruits and vegetables. If you can see, as you can see on our MyPlate diagram, half of our plate is full of fruits and vegetables. Um, so why do you guys think that fruits and vegetables are such an important part of our diet? Fruits and vegetables are really high in vitamins and minerals, fiber, folate, things like potassium, all of these things that are typically lower in the American diet. So by increasing our fruits and vegetables intake, we are supplementing some of these important nutrients that we really need that are important for our health. And they're also typically very low in calories, in sugar, in fat. And so this also helps to maximize nutrition while limiting you know, empty calories and things like that. They also, diets high in fruits and vegetables are also known to help reduce the risk of many chronic diseases such as diabetes, cancer, hypertension, things like that. How many fruits and vegetables are suggested for daily intake? Typically we suggest that people consume up to one and a half to two cups of fruits every single day. Um, now a lot of people sometimes think that that is a lot at first, that seems like a daunting number. But when you think about what really counts as a cup, um, you could use a, a measuring cup um, to measure out your fruit. If you had a cup of berries or if you had chopped up a bunch of apples or something like that, you could measure it out in a cup or you could use you know, about the size of your fist or the size of a baseball. I have a pretty small fist, so it works for me. Um, but you could think of the size of a baseball. That's going to be equivalent to about a cup. So if you just, you don't have to necessarily use a, a measuring cup all of the time. You could use that idea of a baseball or the size of your fist to look at about the size of a, a small apple. That would be considered a cup or an orange or a medium-sized banana. Um, you can use that rule to kind of understand what counts as a cup to help you get two cups of fruit a day. Now there are many different ways that you can consume fruit. You can consume fruit whole, um, meaning that it is fresh or frozen, dried or canned. All of these options are really great whole fruit options. They uh, maximize the nutrition by minimizing additives such as sugars and things like that. So if you want to you know, fill your plate with one and a half to two cups of fruits, we would recommend that you choose fruits that are either canned, frozen, dried, or fresh. If you notice on the My Plate diagram, the vegetable section is slightly larger than the fruit section. So when we talk about servings and sizes of cups, we want to recommend for people to consume up to two and a half to three cups of vegetables every day. You can use those same recommendations or tricks to measure out a cup using a measuring cup, the size of a fist, or, the, or a baseball for reference. So you could think of things like tomatoes. Uh, a medium-sized tomato might be considered a cup or two medium carrots. When you're considering things like green leafy vegetables, the rules change just a little bit. Um, because green leafy vegetables have so much space and air and water between each piece of, of food, um, we typically will double the amount to be considered one cup. So two cups of spinach or lettuce, kale, any type of green leafy vegetable is going to take two cups of that to be considered a one cup serving. So there, in all in all, we want to encourage people to have five servings of produce every single day. Up to two servings of fruit and three servings of vegetables. And so when you use your meal plans to plan out each of these servings, it really doesn't seem, it really becomes a lot simpler to consume that much produce. Make sure that you utilize those skills that were discussed in previous lessons, in lesson two, to help 
uh, plan out how you're going to get all five servings of produce, two servings of fruits and three servings of vegetables every single day. When you use those meal plans, it becomes very simple and innate to consume this much produce in ways that are, are simple and in ways that you enjoy as well. So the next section of our lesson today is going to be discussing overcoming common barriers to physical activity. There are so many different reasons why people have a hard time following through on their physically active goals to be physically active. Many of these barriers come down to time, access, um, finding activities that they enjoy, having childcare. Uh, there's, there's really just like a bunch of different ones that we could go over and we could, you know, if we were in a class right now, we could go back and forth and talk about what ones that are uh, holding you up individually and different things like that. But we're gonna come back um, to some of just the most common ones that I hear when I'm teaching these classes. Um, person to person and in live time. Oftentimes, the biggest thing that is getting in the way of people following through with their physical activity is motivation. And the biggest recommendation that we have for that is oftentimes people will choose physical activity that they think they need to do instead of choosing physical activity that they actually enjoy. And when you are choosing physical activity that you don't personally enjoy, you are not going to have a easy time following through. That motivation is gonna lack. You're going to have these barriers that stand in your way, time, energy, motivation, because it's not something that you enjoy. And so my biggest, biggest tip that I could give to you to overcoming barri barriers to physical activity is to choose activities that you enjoy. If you don't like running, like me, I don't enjoy running long distances, don't make that your goal to start. Choose something that you enjoy doing. It could be dancing, it could be biking, it could be, if you're limited on time, make it things that you're already doing. Cleaning around your house is a physical activity. It's going to increase your heart rate. It's going to get your body moving more. It could be things like parking in the back of a parking lot. That can also help you overcome barriers if there is a limit on time. It could be as simple as things like that, or if you enjoy doing certain types of physical activity like lifting weights. Make what you enjoy your priority first. And then once you have that as part of your regular routine, you can use that as a base to build up the amount of physical activity that you are doing in a day.